drilled this Team Liquid team is at the moment. Beautiful usage of utility. That's so fantastic. Oh my God. Hello, Tens from Cloud9 here. Today, we're going to be comparing Valorant and CSGO. Dude, Tens, your room is fucking insane. <laughs> Today we're starting with gun mechanics such as spraying, ADSing, and buying menu. The first thing you'll notice when you're on the menu of Valorant is that there is a practice tool right here for you and you can go into the range instantly. It's very cool how the practice tool is right there in the game without you having to install anything else. In Counter-Strike to open up the shooting range you actually have to go into the workshop and you have to subscribe to the aimbots or whatever shooting range map you want to open up and then you subscribe to it and you open it from here. In the buying menu, the difference it has from CS is it's more interactive with your team where you can nice. call out if you're gonna buy, save, mm -hmm. or something like that. If your teammate requests for a buy, you can also instantly buy them when they right click Anyone on a gun. Funds to spare? And one of the cool things is you can buy both the rifles without having to be on a certain side. So if you're on attacking side, you can buy the Phantom, or if you're on the defending side, you can buy the Vandal. In Counter-Strike, the guns that you buy are locked to what side you're on. So when you're on the terrorist side, you're only able to buy the terrorist guns. So the Glial AK, Krieg, uh, the Auto Sniper on T side, or the MAC-10, guns like those. On the CT side, you're able to buy the M4 from Moss, AUG, the SCAR, and the MP9 which you're not able to buy on the terrorist side. Similar to Counter-Strike, you can buy abilities, which are the utility of this game, but we're going to be getting more into that in another episode. A very cool feature in this game is if you accidentally buy the wrong weapon or you buy when your team is saving, you can actually return the weapon to get your money back. In Counter-Strike, once you buy a gun, you're not able to refund it as... Like in Valorant, you can actually refund armor or any guns or abilities that you purchase, but you're not able to refund any grenades or any weapons that you buy. So any weapons you buy are just wasted money if you accidentally bought it. We talked about the buy menu, so let's talk about the overall aiming in Valorant. Similar to Counter-Strike, when you are running, your gun is very inaccurate compared to when you're standing still. So if you want to make sure your shots hit, make sure you're standing still when you're shooting your gun, or else your bolts are going to be not perfectly accurate. Valorant has a sniper known as the Operator, which sounds like the op for anybody that plays CSGO, which it is, the op. Um, but this gun is very, very rewarding, and it is one kill in the body. But it's very hard to use due to your shots being inaccurate if you're moving. You gotta make sure you're standing still when you're shooting your gun. Also be missing a lot of shots. I'd say the snipers in this game are quite different compared to Counter-Strike. In Counter-Strike, you can be a lot more aggressive with the AWP and the Scout. In Valorant's version of the Scout is the Marshall. I'd say right now that the Marshall does shoot a lot faster than the Counter-Strike version. The two main ARs in Valorant are the Phantom, which is most similar to the M4 and the Vandal, which is similar to the AK. The Phantom has a very high rate of fire and is most deadly at medium to close range. The Vandal has a slower rate of fire, but is always a one hit headshot, no matter what range you're firing at. So in Valorant, the spray patterns always follow the same concept of going up and then curving to the left and then going right. So if you spray any gun, you'll see that the spray pattern right here always goes left and then goes to the right no matter what gun you're using. Whether it is an AR or an SMG, they always follow the same pattern. The difference between this game and Counter-Strike is that the spray patterns for each gun are drastically different for each gun, making you have to learn a new spray pattern. When you're trying to control the spray pattern for a gun, just shoot it at a wall first and see how the bullets land. If you can see this pattern here, it goes up to the left and then to the right. So you want to compensate your mouse down to the right and to the left to counter the spray. So you see here, I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, I can, I can show my crosshair. 1422 white. One of the cool things in Valorant is every gun can actually ADS, but when you're ADSing in this game, it reduces the overall fire rate of the gun and makes the spray a little bit harder to control in my opinion because it's more random. 
And other guns, such as the Stinger, for example, they also set the gun on a four, a four burst. So you're not able to full spray with ADS in. Another example is the Bulldog, which is fully auto when you're in the hip fire, but when you're ADS, you're assuming you're three on burst. In Counter Strike, you're only able to hip fire with about like basically every gun allows you to only hip fire. The only guns that really allow you to use a scope are the snipers and the Krieg and the Aug. But every other gun you have to use the hip fire. So one of the benefits to using hip fire in this game is that your hip fire will always stay the same and your bullets are always accurate. When you're ADSing, the only really big benefit is the zoomed in FOV, which makes it a little bit easier to hit targets. But if you start spraying with ADS in, it's gonna be a lot harder to control and spray from the enemy. So any CS players, you'll know about counter strafing, and counter strafing is moving left and right and shooting as soon as you are standing still when you're like pressing the other direction. So as soon as you are moving one direction, you press the other direction, there's gonna be a small little time frame when your bullet's accurate. So in Valorant though, uh, counter shaping isn't as much important because when you stay like when you're holding D and you let go or you're holding A and letting go, your character instantly stops. So you can actually get away without counter shaping. And just like in Counter-Strike, the most important thing when you're using a rifle is hitting headshots because they do the most damage. Thanks everyone and I hope you enjoyed and make sure you stay tuned for the next episode about abilities. And leave a comment down below if there's anything else you want to compare.